Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Wave those hands and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, you don't sound excited. Bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I know you've been hearing a lot about per people passing, but the fact that you're alive is a reason to praise God and give thanks. Amen? It's offering time. I want you to hold your neighbor's hand and tell them, feel the energy. Say, Come on, say, feel the energy. Good, good. That's good. Let's, 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 set, let's set the place ablaze with the energy of the Holy Spirit. The Bible according to the gospel according to uh, Luke chapter 6 says that 6 and verse 38 yes thank you I see everybody's energized now bless God Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and I like this part running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured back to you if i may say real quick um while i was studying engineering i was taught that current is the flow of free elections from negative to positive that's current I was also informed when I'm studying theology that current or currency comes from the root word current. I just said to you, for current to flow, there must be negative elections flowing from negative to positive. So already we understand that you cannot have current unless there is a flow. You understand so far? Here's what we generally trip up on. We hold on to what we have, currency, not understanding that we're defeating the purpose of it if it doesn't flow. What am I saying to you? The scripture we just read says give. In other words, it's endorsing the principle of allowing it to flow. So it says give, and it will be given back to you good measure pressed down, shaking together, and running over. So if there is going to be a running, there must be first a giving. Stand to your feet as we're getting ready to give. And if I may just share with you real quick. A couple months ago, we had the first fruit offering. And I gave from the little I had but I gave and when I gave I gave with a purpose saying God I'm expecting you to give me a certain amount on this side what you guys call side gig here I was doing I was doing a project for a client in Trinidad and Tobago they live here but I was doing a project for them there and I said Lord I want you to give me a certain amount on this project and I'm giving with that purpose in mind. So every time you give, you must have a purpose for giving. And I gave with that purpose in mind. Can I tell you that when I signed the contract with the, the client after I showed them the design, they loved it and everything like that. Added to that, I ended up gaining more clients because she started spreading the news about the design and her friend said, when I'm ready, I'm coming to you. That's just side benefits towards the entire process. But can I tell you what I was expecting? I got th three times the amount I was expecting. Because I give understanding that what I have in the first place is not mine. And that's what I want you to always understand when you're giving. It's really not yours. So allow it to flow so that God can bless you immensely. Amen? Amen. It's first Sunday. On first Sunday in this particular church, we observe it as our pastoral Sunday. It's a Sunday when we show our bishop we love him through giving. So I want you this in this moment to purpose in your heart to give even a little extra as we honor the man of God.
Because when you sow into this man of God, the anointing that's on his life, the residue of that anointing will impact your life greatly to go out and be champions in your areas of expertise. All right? Yeah. Bow your heads even now. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the willing hearts that are here this afternoon. We thank you, O oh God, that there are many here who are going to be giving, O oh God, from a place of negative in that they don't have much. But Lord, they're giving because they're given based on the instruction that if it's going to flow, if the currency is going to flow, then it must flow from a negative to a positive. And that's where the overflow is going to occur, God. I pray even now for those who are giving from that position of, of little negative, God. I pray that you will increase them positively. May the blessings of Abraham, O oh God, be upon them. May there be an open heaven hovering over their lives daily. May your transforming grace, O oh God, energize them to go out daily, O oh God, and work with their hands. And they will see the increase. We rebuke the devourer even now because we are giving our tithes and our offering. And that your word says, O oh God, when we give, you will rebuke the devourer from devouring the things that you would have had us to acquire in this lifetime we thank you for what you're doing even now we thank you for what you're going to do bless this offering god may it use to the honor and the glory of your name and may your children see the reward as they sow this seed may they see bountiful returns in jesus mighty name and the blessed people of god say amen bless god Don't sit down. Come on, stand to your feet. It's time to give. We're going to teach you a new song today, all right? It's simple. It says, All other gods, they are the works of man. You are the most high God. There is none like you. That's the first part. All other gods, they are the works of man. God, there is none like you. Let's sing it together.
Let's work together now.
God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you a praise, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 good hallelujah do you feel blessed hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> do you feel good in the house this morning hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you god thank you god and preparing ourselves for the word now thank you jesus preparing ourselves for the word now thank you jesus hallelujah god thank you jesus um today we have with us our minister minister john lee he'll be giving us a word today um, before he comes, the sanctuary choir is going to sing, and he's going to deliver the word, um, but I want to remind you first, um, as Bishop Hendricks has mentioned before, we have three baptisms later, amen? Three baptisms later. So we encourage three people to be baptized later. My, ap <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> we have three people to be baptized later. <laughs> so I encourage you all to stay. Directly after the message, stay for the three people that are to be baptized today. Um, and if you if you like to be baptized, then please speak to Minister Ravine or one of the other ministers to let her know that you'd like to be baptized. And then after that, we will be doing um, membership into the church. So stay and support your, your members, your family, your members of the church um, for the baptism today, directly after the message. So the choir is going to sing, and then the next voice that you will hear will be Minister John Lee. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Come on, just wave your hands again in the house. Don't get tired. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a very simple song. It's a song that we sing all the time. Let it overflow in our spirits. Why not let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit flow into us and pour out so that those around us can be blessed as well. Amen. Bye. 
Jesus. Break me one more time. Break me. Glory. Help me. Help me. And fill me. Spirit of glory. Ha! 
Hallelujah. Lord, we wait. We wait as you move. We wait as you move. Ah. Lord, that you would minister with your accuracy and your sovereignty. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Somebody's crying out for their family this morning. Somebody's crying out for their children this morning. Somebody's crying out for their healing. The doctor had one report, but God has another. We take dominion over the spirit of worrying. The spirit of fretting. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Mm. Let your faith arise as you wait, Lord. Let your strength arise as you wait on the Lord. Mm. Receive life as you wait on the Lord. Receive strength as you wait on the Lord. Open doors, open doors. In the name of Jesus, let it open, let it overflow. In Jesus' name. speak to the well within your belly I speak to the well within your belly that it shall overflow let living waters flow out of your belly let life flow out of you this morning living waters in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah rivers of living water healing waters healing waters ah Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, be broken like the box of alabaster before the master. Be poured out. Be poured out. And don't be ashamed to be poured out. There's a restoring work in this house this morning. There's a restoring move in this house this morning. And all we must do is pour out and allow him just as we cried, Lord, let it overflow. Let him do it. You don't have to force it. It's not your power anyway. But by his Spirit, all you must say is, Lord, I'm available. Lord, here I am. Now, Mama. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That you would overflow. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Ah. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Taste and see. The bread of life. Taste and see. Mm. Some of you are waiting for the preacher, but you don't need the preacher right now. He, the Holy Spirit, speaks himself. Mm. 
healing, healing, healing. Healing, healing, healing. Healing of the heart. Healing of the heart. Some of you came in heartbroken this morning. You came in hurting this morning. Hallelujah. If most, most of our body, if our body was to be hurt, we'll go to the hospital and the doctor would give stitches to your body. But I learned that the spirit is better than stitches. And he's come to make you whole. He's come to refresh you. He's come to renew you. All you must do is let him work this morning. So as you are in your place, for those that believe and those that know he will do it, all you must do is say, Lord, here I am. Fix it, Jesus. And receive your healing. Receive your healing. It is done. It is done. prepare to move on. I just want you to find two or three people around you and I want you to embrace them. And I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you to speak a word of encouragement, to speak a word of life. If the pre person that's all around you are asking the Lord for healing, I want you to be the hands of the Lord, the extension of the Spirit, and pray for their healing, believing that God will do. If they have a need, I want you to pray for them. Find a couple people around you. The Holy Spirit is already here. We are the church, the living stones, the living temple of God. Let that was in you, let it overflow. Let it overflow. Ah, yeah. I pray for the manifestation of the gifts of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. I ignite, I commission. I commission by the authority of the God. That the anointing of God be upon you to impart blessing. To speak blessing, to speak blessing. To speak life, speak life. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let him lead you, speak life, speak life. Hey! It is done, it is done, it is done. Hallelujah, let the Lord lead you, let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord lead you. Pass it on, pass it on. The love of God, the love of God, the blessing of God. In the name of Jesus, the blessing of God, the blessing. Hallelujah. The blessing, the blessing, the blessing. Anointing 
destroy the yoke. Let every bondage be broken. Let every weight be lifted. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The joy of the Lord. this place. Mm. Yes. Some of you received your destiny just now. Some of you received your identity just now. Man. Hallelujah. And if you're not too tired, I want you just to release a praise. Just release a praise in this atmosphere. Give a thanks unto God for what he's done. Hallelujah. If you believe God has done a work, if you know that you know, that you know that you know, go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and decree it. Go ahead and exalt the name of our God. Exalt the name of our King. He has done great things. He has done marvelous things for which we are Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. Yeah. I need some warriors. I need some praise warriors. I need some praise warriors. We can't let the enemy steal what just happened. Where are the praise warriors? Where are the worshipers? Those that fight in the spirit. I need you, I need you. Let's get on one accord. Let's stay on one accord. We say we want to move, let's move. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. 
on, warriors. Come on, warriors. Yay! Come on, warriors. Yay! Stand in your place. Stand in your place. Ah. Oh. The Sovereign Lord, the Sovereign Lord is in this place. As the Lord leads you, continue to do as he tells you. Ah. Ah. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Yes. I see something moving. I see something moving. Ah, ah, yeah! I see the dawning of a new day. I see a dawning. Ah, 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 of a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yay. Yay. Oh, mama, mama, mama. Amazing doesn't even cut it. Amazing doesn't even cut it. <laughs> awesome doesn't even cut it. Hallelujah. We're not going to rush. But as we continue to bask in this presence, just turn your Bibles to Psalm 27. Hallelujah. We're not going to rush. I don't want you to feel like you need to come down I just want you to allow the Lord to minister to you as he free flows I give honor to God I honor our pastor our leader our shepherd I honor all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I honor the sweet anointing that's in this place the sweet presence of God that is with us hallelujah I greet you all I welcome you all and then uh as we prepare to go in, I understand. I, I, did, I, would, I did receive a visitor card. I do want to acknowledge them before I go in. We have Brother O'Neill Reed and Brother Jason Reed. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Psalm 27, hallelujah. If you're able to, please stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. If he is still ministering to you, do not stop the spirit. Hallelujah. I don't believe he's done. I don't believe he's done. I believe so many times we, we, we stop at the first move and believe that God's done. There's still more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, loose me, God. Loose me, God, to do what you have for this moment. In the, hey, God, in the name of Jesus, sovereign God, I pray that can you continue to move over this atmosphere, Lord. Brood over this word, oh God. Lord, I pray that we would hear with open ears and open hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, hallelujah, Lord, that this be an unusual moment, oh God. I pray, God, for those in their spirit, oh God. I pray that we pray as we hear, oh God. I pray that we pray as we hear, oh God. And as we pray, as we hear, Lord, we expect to see you move continually. God, I thank you for the healing that was already taking place, oh God. But God, I know you have more. I know you do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. God, I don't limit you to the moment we just had. But God, I release you. I free. And I ask you, oh God, to move now, oh God. Continually have your way as we follow your voice. Lord, cover me. 
with your blood, oh God. Protect this atmosphere, oh God. Protect the sensitivity of this atmosphere. Protect the sensitivity of this atmosphere, oh God. That as you continue to speak, oh God, Lord, that we would be obedient, oh God. Lord, oh God, Lord, the timing is right, oh God. The timing is right, oh God. That you would speak to your people in your sovereign way, oh God. And I pray that our hearts this morning, oh God, will be in the position that we say, yes, Lord. We'll do whatever you say, oh God, your will and your way, oh God. As we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. The word of the Lord from Psalms 27. I have a special greetings and things afterwards. I'll, I'll just go ahead on. It reads on this why the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Let's stop right there. Read that again. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Let's go on. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also unto me, and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek my, ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, lead me not. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Huh. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart Wait, I say, on the Lord. Somebody shout a great hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in the house of God. Amen and amen. God is a good God. He's awesome. He's worthy. He's great. And I'm not going to be before you long. I dare not take too long. But I want to encourage us. Even in this moment, I realize God puts things together in a sovereign way. And I want to challenge us. I want to, as we're in this moment that God is commissioning, that God is empowering, I, I feel and sense God is thrusting us into something. God is thrusting us into new things. And the thing is, one question is, I want you to understand, I want to ask you, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid for? Really, what are you afraid of? And what are you afraid for? And if anything, if I can make a, a, a theme or a slang with that, forgive me, I'm, I'm going to act my age real quick. And I want you to tap your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I don't care what's going on. I'm not scared. Look at somebody else. Say, neighbor, you see what's coming ahead of us? I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I won't be afraid. 
so many things come and plague the mind. So many things come to destroy the thought process. Realize one thing, there's one thing I understand about God. God doesn't create things that are less than greatness. God doesn't create things that are less than excellent. But the thing I realize that many of us, even under the sound of my voice, we're plagued by a thing that's called fear. We're plagued and we're stopped and we're hindered because we're afraid of something. We're afraid of things that are ahead. Even now, um, God has spoken ideas and strategies to some of us. God has told us, even in this last moment, who we are and what we are to do. But the first thing we did afterwards was, God, I'm scared. Even before we came into the house of the Lord, God is speaking, God is moving, God is brooding, brooding and hovering, but we're scared. We see that there's open doors in front of us or even situations that we're in right now might not seem comfortable. But instead of moving in faith as we ought to, we stand in fear. I love the scripture that says we walk by faith and not by sight. But in order for us to do that, we can't stand in fear. We love the saying, there's a saying from the United College, a Negro College fund that says that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Because the mind is in a garden. The mind is a factory of hope. The mind is a factory of, of, of patience and grace and favor and destiny. But realize when fear creeps in, it destroys what's there. How important is your mind? The mind is so important. There's a song from the old that says, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. We love the scripture that says he will keep your mind in perfect peace for those whose mind is stayed on Jesus. We love the word of God that says be ye not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When your mind is renewed in God, there's no room for fear. When your mind is renewed in God, there's no room for the enemy to make you afraid of what God has afraid ahead of you. I learned in the word of God, the Bible says that the love of God casts out all fear. If you are perfect love, casts out all fear. So guess what? All you need if you're afraid is love. Not only that, if all you need is love, all you also need is to walk in the spirit. But let's rewind. Let's talk about fear. What is fear? Fear in most cases is the feeling that comes from the threat of danger, evil, or pain. And some cases is also awe, especially in the context of God. Because we stand in fear of God, but it's a holy fear. It's a loving fear. It's not that we're scared of God, but we understand the greatness of God. So we don't just come flippantly to him, but we move. In that kind of fear. And that fear, I'll just throw out there, is good because it says that the beginning of knowledge and fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Let me leave that there. So the other fear, the other fear comes to torment us. It comes to bring us into distress. And then what it does is a, a natural survival mechanism that we call flee or fight. Fight or flee. That means when you come to a situation, we're not, we're not subject to really think it through in some cases. But we're caused to act. And there's two things we're saying, fight or flee. We either fight or we run. Fight or flight. We fight or we run. And many times we know what we do. We get to the place where we run. Holy Ghost is moving. Even in church, I saw that even. The Spirit of God is moving. We run. The voice of God is speaking to you, and you run. The enemy is coming to destroy, and you run. But today, I speak to the army of God. I speak to those that are empowered by the Spirit, that we fight the good fight of faith. That we fight, and we don't be afraid. That we fight this day. But what are you afraid of? What are you afraid for? Many of us had bullies in school. 
And whenever the bully came around, we got scared. Some of us spoke in tongues before we knew we knew how to speak in tongues. Because we saw the bully. Oh, ye God, help me, God. Help me, Jesus. Understand we have a bully in the spirit. There's an adversary that wants to destroy what God is putting before you. I, I dare not be not cognizant of what God is doing. But I encourage us to not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Many of us have situations. We get into the doctor recently and the doctor gave us a report we don't like. We look at our bank account and we don't see amounts that we like. We look at our situations and where we are in life and we're in situations that we don't like. But we're scared to change. We're scared to let God transform us. And I understand one thing. I, I, I remember listening to messages. We really do have to stand in the authority of who we are in Christ. Because what happens is this. Rather than being lions of God that roar, we become scaredy cats. Not only that, but we become the powerless Christian. The Christian that has a cross on the neck, but no power. The one that has a cross and is proud to say, I'm a Christian, but has no resurrection power. Or rather, let's keep it real. It's not that we don't have resurrection power, but we're scared to acknowledge that is within us. We're scared to move into the things of God. We're scared of what God is going to do. We become like Jonah, and we end up in the but this morning, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. What are you afraid of? Let me name some things most of us are afraid of at time to time. We're afraid of what people will say. We're afraid of what people will do. We're afraid of what people will look at us like. We're afraid of what will happen if we do a certain thing. We're afraid if we fully trust God. And I learned something when it comes to tithing. Tithing is not a financial issue. Tithing is a trust issue. Mm. Are we afraid of fully submitting to trusting God's will and his way? Are you afraid of losing your job? Are you afraid of not being successful? Are you afraid of your secrets and insecurities? Are you afraid of the darkness? Are you afraid of spiders or snakes? Are you afraid of becoming sick? Are you afraid for the state of your marriage? Do they really love me? Can they really love me? Are you afraid of or for your children? Are you afraid of God? Are you afraid of the preacher? Are you afraid of the church? Are you afraid of the Holy Ghost? Are you afraid of going to the altar? Are you afraid of having hands laid on you? Are you afraid of spirits instead of standing on your authority in God? Are you afraid of your future? Are you plagued and afraid of your past? Are you afraid to die, yet at the same time you're scared to live? Are you afraid that even though things can touch your body, you're scared and don't realize it can't touch your soul? So this morning, we take authority over the spirit of fear. That's a spirit. It's a plague. It's, an, it's, a, it's, it's cholesterol in our spiritual hearts. Because we don't need to be in fear. Three reasons let me give you. And I'm about to move out the way. Do not be in bondage to fear. One, just as the word says, God is our light and salvation. Whom shall we fear? Many of us as children were scared of the dark. I confess, I was one of those children. I couldn't sleep unless somebody put a nightlight on. How many of us know that instead of us needing a nightlight, we are the nightlight? And somebody in your world, I'm not going to say the preacher's world, I'm going to make it real. Someone in your world needs a light. Someone in your world is in darkness, scraping around. Because we do in the dark, when you can't see, you feel around. And you, when you feel around, you bump into things and get bumped and bruised. But all some people need is what God is calling you to be. 
And that's a light. But you must not be afraid to be a light. Because light dispels the darkness and make all things visible. Secondly, we don't need to be afraid of bondage or fear because we love this scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. He's there. So he is the light. The light is within you. And God is with you. There's nothing but light around you. Don't receive the darkness. Don't let the world cover your light. Don't let the world stifle your light. You were meant to shine. But you must not be afraid. As we go through, know that you're going through and that God is there with you. And there's, there's a scripture I, I want to say since five minutes ago. We all know it for God has not given us. The spirit of fear, but of love, power, and the sound mind. Look at somebody and say, be brave. Be courageous. Look at somebody else, be brave. Be courageous. Because your victory and power over fear was given to you at the cross. And there's three words I love to remind us in times of fear, in times of famine, in times of doubt. There's three words I love that God reminds me, despite of all things, he takes me back to Calvary where he said, it is finished. <laughs> Realize that. Realize that. No matter what it is that tries to torment you, no matter what it is that tries to come against our vision of ministry, guess what? It's finished. So now... I don't have to be afraid of the bullet. You don't have to be afraid of the circumstance. All you can do is be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and speak to that thing and say it is finished. Guess what doubt? You're finished. Guess what poverty? You're finished. Inadequacy? You're finished. Lack of knowledge? You're finished. I don't know who I am. You're finished. The church won't grow. Uh-uh. You're finished. My ministry will not succeed. Guess what? It's finished. But I walk in the newness of life. That business God has given you, the doubt and the strings around it is finished. The future of your children not being saved, the future of your children not being anybody is finished. Worrying about what people think about you. It's finished. Worrying about if people will accept you. It's finished. I don't care if you like how I preach or if you don't like how I preach. If you like how I shout or you don't like how I shout. God gave it to me. And so the identity of fear that was is finished. And I testify. I used to be afraid. I used to be scared. I was afraid to, to realize that God made me a little bit different than everyone else. That God made me just a little bit different. And people would look at me in church. Why do he do that? Why does he speak like that? Why does he preach like that? Why does he dress like that? But then I realized you shouldn't be looking at this. So I'm not afraid of what you see on this. Because what's on the inside is strong. What's on the inside is courageous. What's on the inside outweighs what's on the outside. And I've learned and I encourage us to not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I don't understand why this was a message for today but I submit to God to declare it again do not be afraid I don't know what's coming I can't expound on it but all I know is I was told to say do not be afraid hallelujah do not be afraid don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong for like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take the light in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn. And the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes as the Lord so says in Psalm 37. Fret not thyself over evildoers. I understand the economy still isn't where it should be. I understand that things aren't where we consider, where we desire them to be. But understand we can't worry. We can't worry. We can't be afraid. We can't be tormented. We can't let God's vision be shot down because of fear. I'll give you one last scripture. And I'll let you take it with you. Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father, guess what? He already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring his own worries today's trouble is enough for today let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus I'm not, I'm not worried about the rest of the notes because I know God is speaking I know he's speaking I, I know that I know that I know it's not because of me anyway God already told you God already spoke to you. I don't know who this is for, but do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Many of us here have been plagued by the spirit of fear. Fear has held us down. Fear has made us afraid. Matter of fact, you know I'm about to make an altar call, and you're already thinking I'm not going to come up. Ha, I take the in, yeah. Many of us have been plagued by fear. Many of us are afraid to move because of fear. And today is the day that we break that chain. And I realize this, even through thinking in the spirit, so many times we think it's the laying of the hands. But today, guess what? It's going to be because you walked. Because you trusted God enough to walk forward. Chains will fall in the eye. But well, I'm going to need all of us for this altar call. I need all of us to be in prayer. Because if we're not the one in fear, most of us know we were the one in fear. It was us. And I, I, I have this thing in my heart that God will move corporately. That God will move upon all of us when we get on one accord. I was blessed when Mother Williams was addressing the church this morning about being on one accord. About oneness. We speak so much about unity, I think we're afraid of it sometimes. Why do I feel we're afraid of it? Because right when we get to the brink, we let something snatch it back. Right when we get to the edge of breakthrough and revival and transformation, we become afraid. This morning, I'm done. I already trust the Holy Ghost has spoken. And those that may have felt they've been bound by fear or there's afraid of something or feel that the enemy is trying to speak fear onto them, I want you to come. Those. Also, I want you to realize this. For those that aren't saved, Christ is a liberator. You see, what happened at Calvary was for your eternal life. That you will be free from the chains of sin death and shame and the thing that gives us power over fear is that great thing that he had on Calvary and it's called love some of us are scared to love we've been hurt so many times we're afraid to love we're afraid of being rejected afraid of being thrown away 
but I want you to know you're still precious. You are still treasure to God. You shall love again. You shall receive love again. You're afraid that if you let your guard down, your peace will be tormented. So you live in fear. You live in fear of relationship. You live in fear of people. Today we cast it down. You shall not live in fear. Hallelujah. And so as I said earlier, I need all of us. Because I believe that there are those at this altar that chains have already been broken. And I believe that even as you stand at this moment, it's continuing to work in your life. That the chains of fear, the chains of what man will say, the chains and the bondage will fall. And not only that, when he frees you, don't pick it back up. Be thou set free. In Jesus' name. And be not entangled again in a yoke of bondage. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'll ask all of our ministers to come and pray. But as we pray, I pray that we ask that we all pray corporately. At this time, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we declare you to be the God of this house. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand bold and courageous. But we don't stand bold and courageous in our own strength. We stand bold and courageous because, God, you are the captain of the host. You are the leader of this army. You are the sovereign God that's in charge. So we stand in you. We stand in awe of your glory. And Lord, today, oh God, we stand on the authority of your word and the authority of your spirit over the bondage of fear. Lord, many of us have been afraid of the terror by night. We've been afraid of the sun by day. But God, today, today in the name of Jesus, God, we stand, oh God, that you would break every chain every way to fear oh God Lord I pray release over your people this morning in the name of Jesus